What's up guys, He King here bringing you another manga review this week on Black Clover. This is going to be a double review because last week I didn't do one because I had COVID and I was recovering from that. So sorry about that guys, feeling slightly better now. So yeah, I'm trying to get all my reviews out this week that I didn't do last week and doing the reviews for this week as well. So this is going to be a double review review we're going to be doing chapter 328 and chapter 329 of black clover so yeah guys before i get started remember to like and subscribe and yeah let's just get right into it because these are some very short chapters but they were also very decent and good chapters in my opinion. A lot of people, at least when it comes mainly to the fan base, it seems that they're very heavily criticizing Tabitha for the way he's concluded what appears to be this battle with Lucifero. Personally, I don't mind it. I like what I've seen. I like what's happened. And uh, yeah, people and the haters can go and screw themselves. I mean, if they keep thinking they're going to expect something similar to, I don't know, Bleach with Aizen or Naruto of Madara, you know, this 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 wasn't it. You know, if you went into this thinking Lucifer was going to be this big ultimate bad guy, then no. And yeah, it was... It, it made sense it wouldn't be that case. But yeah, well, let's go into this and then discuss it as we're, as we're reading. So yeah, we, we, we leave off with, uh, with if you guys remember, you know, I think, I think Asta and Lieb had like five seconds basically to beat this dude. So the climax of the battle against Lucifero, give chase Asta. So we got uh, Asta going at it with Lucifero, he's going at him and he's dodging, you know, he's throwing the debris at him, you know, Lucifero's throwing the debris at Asta and Asta's dodging the debris, he's going up on the debris, climbing on the debris, jumping down towards him to get to him. And Lucifero like pulling up the debris, the rocks up at him, trying to haul him up. And we get these flashbacks. We get these flashbacks with Lieb and uh, Letitia, Oster's mom. And Oster is now seeing these memories. He's feeling and seeing these memories. And we get this one memory where she's like, I had a son. He should be around the same age as you, Lieb. I was so thankful to see he was born healthy. It's interesting that she's saying that he, he would be around the same age as Lieb. So... Uh, I'm assuming we're supposed to get the impression that Leap and is is actually very young, like he is a child. He is the same age as us. The technically, he's not like this very old old demon. He is technically a kid. He was born in the underworld, and he is that old. Perhaps, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, we're getting that. And she's like, I was so thankful to see he was born healthy. And we cut back to the fight. You know, Lucifer goes right in to get to get to Asta as as he's getting pulled up by the, the by the rock. And then we're cutting back down to the flashback again. She's like, but nonetheless, if I had stayed at his side, I would have ended up stealing his life force. And so I left him. I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm unfit to be a mother and leaves hearing this. And then we're cutting back to the fight. And, you know, Lucifer is going for a punch at Asta. He's going for that punch. Again, cutting back to the flashback. And I will never be by his side. I will never hold him in my arms. I will never get to see him ever again, but tomorrow and the day after, always, always and forever, I will love him. And yeah, we get that confirmation that yeah, Letitia did love her son. She didn't wanna she didn't wanna get rid of him. She only did it because she couldn't take care of him, because she had this magic that could technically kill him. Uh, some people would be like, well, isn't it similar to Henry's? Henry's magic steals mana. Okay, it steals like the uh, the magic energy from you. It doesn't steal the life force. Letitia's magic ability was literally staining life. So if if it's it's amazing that Lasta even survived growing up in her womb in the first place. For example, you gotta wonder what what was up with that. But uh, the point is that once he was born, you know something was up and she was going to end up taking his magic and that, so or taking his life force, basically. I mean, a lot of theories are that maybe she was the one responsible for taking his magic in the first place, that, you know, as he was as he was growing up in the womb, that's what actually protected him, that the reason that his life force wasn't taken is because it was, it was the magic feeling in for the life force instead. So while he was growing up in the womb, all that magic basically disappeared. And once he was born, that magic was gone. And that explains why he's why he has no you know magic abilities. But if he had said any longer, his life force would have gone. So yeah, maybe maybe that's the reason. Maybe we'll get an answer to that uh, eventually in the future. But for now, the important factor in this is is that Asta is is seeing these memories of his mother basically, and he's getting that confirmation that no, she did love him. And 
yeah, um, it's great to see that. And, and Lucifer in that moment also recognizes Letitia in Asta. Like he's he's looking at Asta with that face as he's going out in for an attack, and he sees Letitia's face. He's seeing, uh, you know, that's that it's that it's basically maybe her. And he's like, you wretch, that worthless bitch who got in my way. You're her, and he realizes that, and he goes for a hit. But Asta, he just, he just, he just stripes. He stripes and he knocks off. He rips off the arm, basically, that goes for the attack. He cuts off the arm. Or is it a horn, perhaps? I think it's an arm. He cuts off Lucifero's arm. And Lucifero goes for his other, you know, he goes for a hit with, with the other arm that he's got left. And Asta dodges it. And he cuts that one off as well. He cuts off that arm. So he's, dude is limbless now at this point, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's limbless. His arms gone. All of his arms are, or hands, if you will, are gone. You know, Lucifer just taken aback by this. And then, and then Asta just going for, going for another hit. Like, like, it's, it's way too fast to see what's going on here. But he's going for another hit. And he's like, Asta's like, the only one who's worthless is you. And he strikes down Lucifer right across you know, the shoulder all the way cutting down, cutting him in half, essentially, away from his legs. And then he goes for another hit, like, across from where the, basically, the chest area, the torso area. And he's slicing that part off. And and we see the clover. We see the clover, the five-leaf clover, I believe, on Oster's. I believe this is on Oster's head, maybe? Um... Uh, uh, I didn't. I didn't see if I didn't. I didn't see if I got a good look at it. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, I can't tell if 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 Asta has that. He's got a five leaf clover basically. I don't. I don't know if this is on his forehead or if it's on a different part of his body. But he's got the five leaf clover like symbol on his head there. Or, or I think it's his head or it's some part of his other bo other body. And. Uh, yeah, uh, and Lucifero, and, and and it seems the Devil Union basically ends. I think that's what it signifies. The Devil Union ends because we see Lieb and uh, like basically come out of Osta. Now they're both side by side, and Lucifero has been cut in half, and he's basically sort of just falling down. And the blood splatters on the ground, and Lucifero just collapses on the ground. And yeah, Osta and Lieb are basically talking. You know, the same while you crawl on the ground, we're going to live. And be happy, and we see Austin Lieb side by side together, looking down at Lucifero's deformed, cut up, limbless body. The Demon King is overwhelmed, and that's how Chapter Three Twenty Eight ended. And yeah, a lot of people didn't appear to be happy with this. A lot of people assumed that oh, this is it, Lucifero's dead. Then, uh, a next chapter, they're either gonna kill him off or we're gonna get some big reveal. But uh, that's not the case because next chapter that we get. Lucifero basically dies at this point, I think. Uh, and I'm not I'm not upset by this. I'm not upset. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get to that why. I'll get to that why once I read both of these chapters. Okay. Okay. So that's the first chapter done. Let's move on to the next. Honest, honest opinion, pretty good chapter. I like the fact that Asta saw the memories of his mother. I love the fact that he saw that she did confirm that she did love him, in fact, and that she was trying to save him. Uh, I'm very curious to see where this goes now with the relationship that he has with, with her and the relationship he's going to have with Lieb. I'm hoping it's going to be a very brotherly relationship, and I'm hoping it's going to be him finally acknowledging that he did have a mom and that she did love him and that maybe he wants to learn more about her. Maybe he's going to be, you know, maybe he's going to go to Lieb and he's going to like, hey... Can you tell me stories of her, if you will? Like, can we just sit down and talk about her and tell me what fun times you had and what she was like and how she treated you, etc., etc. I, I want to see those kind of moments, and I'm hoping we see we see us to do that because I think that would be nice and lovely, just sort of them getting closer together as well. Because I've, at this point, he has to realize us to realize that brothers now. At this point, he realizes he's brother. So, yeah, it has to be more than a relationship of a like, oh yeah, you're, you're my devil, whatever, you're my slave, or you're my, you know, my friend, you know, we're not just friends, we're brothers now, so I'm hoping to see more of that, I'm hoping to see that the relationship develop further, because I think that's the key thing, I think that's what's the most important thing about this story, and about this fight, it's the fact that these two grew closer as they were fighting Lucifero, you know, screw Lucifero not being this great big villain that he's supposed to be, you know, I don't care about that, I care about these characters, I don't care about the villain, basically, I know, I know sometimes you want the villain to be good, but, uh, 
for someone that was sort of uh, introduced at uh, uh, killing his mom and that and, and the way the other devils have been introduced they haven't been very interesting if that makes sense the devils have not been very interesting uh, foes you know they're very arrogant they're very egotistical they hate human beings etc etc there isn't a lot you could do with uh, villains like that you know what I mean you know you know not, not, not every villain is going to be as three dimensional or as dramatic as char you know as villains like Pain for example or Aizen or You Watch or characters like in One Piece, like Do Flamengo and that, etc., etc. You know, like you know, sometimes villains are just villains. You know, they're just you know pieces of crap and they're evil for the sake of being evil. And that's kind of what the devils are, really. You know, with Lee being the exception, and maybe that other devil that's just sort of sitting there by the rock watching this whole thing unfold. We still don't know nothing about that one, and we do get something here at the end of this chapter with them. But yeah, let's go into this, guys. Again, remember to like and subscribe guys and yeah let's start uh, chapter 329 so yeah we cut to lucifero and he's like you know this chapter is called the devil king and the magicless boys by the way so yeah lucifero is like impossible this can't be happening as lucifero lies on the ground what does he think of I am the greatest devil, Lucifero, the apex of all devils with the most powerful magic. No one could ever harm me. And yet, these brats with no magic at all. And he's staring up at them, and he's angry. He's pissed off, like he's losing it. And he shouts out, there's no way I could ever lose. And that shout, he's using his last remaining ounce of magic that he has to basically cause some sort of gravity fall for these two to make them collapse, essentially. And they fall, and Asta's like, after all of that, he still isn't down, and we cut to leave, and he's like, to negate this gravity anymore, I can't coat our bodies with enough anti-magic, oh, I can't coat our bodies enough of anti-magic to negate this gravity anymore, so yeah, it, it, seem, it seems they're down, it seems they're about to lose, but no, that's not the case, because Lucifer is getting up, he's limbless, and he's got the tendrils forming out, they didn't hit his heart, it seems, so he's still alive, technically speaking, and he's like, how dare you look down on me for even a moment. Half my strength still lies in the underworld. I'm not at my full strength. So yeah, the camera cut off there for a second. So yeah, so yeah, Asta and Lieb falling down because of whatever gravity attack that Lucifero's using. And he's like, half my strength still lies in the underworld. I'm not at my full strength yet. Otherwise, you bastards wouldn't have pushed me this far. You couldn't have. And we cut to that devil, again, whatever their name is, Ar Ar Ardramal or Ardra. I don't even know how to say it. The name is so bloody long. You know what? Let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can uh, uh, somehow find, I don't know, I don't know, somehow maybe, maybe read their name or something and put it in the English translation, maybe, uh, a dramole. A d what? A dramolek. A dramolek. A dramolek. Okay, so the character's name is called a dramolek. <laughs> it's so hard to say. A dramolek. So yeah, a dramolek is standing by that rock, still watching. Still don't know if this is a boy or girl character, by the way. And Lucifer, Lucifer is still screeching. You know, you can't do anything now. Fool, be crushed. In the end, it's your loss, you pieces of film. So Lucifero is trying to escape. He's trying to crush them and trying to escape back to the underworld, it seems. But then you got Yami and Nacht coming in to the rescue, saving Asta and Lieb. And again, you damn bastards. And then you've got both of them saying, here and now, we'll surpass our limits. I mean, these guys have Lucifero's arms still in their chests. Like... These two could still potentially die, by the way. They could still potentially die. Like, you have to remember that. I mean, I mean their chests are plugged up right now with, with Lucifero's arms. I mean, that's probably what's keeping them from bleeding out to death. But the moment you remove that, they're probably going to die, right? So, uh, for all we know, these two could still die. We don't know We don't know yet if they're going to live. We don't know what we're certain. But, uh, yeah, he's screaming and he's like, struggle in vain if you like. You still can't attack me. That Brad can't even stand. And he's referring to Asta, but then... Asta gets up and he's standing, he's like, what What the hell is this? And he's standing in front of Lucifero. And again, he's just calling him about, all he's doing is name calling at this point. This is this is someone who is now realizing that he's about to die. And all he can do is name call and use whatever strength he, ever, he has remained to get the hell out. And Asta's anti-magic blade is just bubing. And, 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 and Nyame just standing there like laughing. <laughs> uh, hey, mighty, oh, hey, Mr. Almighty Devil King, are you scared of our brat? And... 
yeah, Lucifer, he turns around. He's trying to run away. He's trying to run away from Master from killing him. And he shouts out going, next time, the next time we meet, uh, with my full strength, I'll definitely kill you all. And as he's running away, uh, we get, we get, we get, you know, you know, you know, he's using his, uh, he's, he's, he, I don't know what, he's star magic, basically, to transport Asta from Yami and Nacht to Lucifero, to Lucifero in a very quick method, in a very quick way, and he's like, next time, I'll definitely, as he says this, and the next second, you got that star orb there on one end with next to Yami and Nug, and then at the other end next to Lucifero, and, you, you know, Asta just pops up. He appears right there in front of him, and it looks like Leap has joined with him because, you know, the whole arm is sort of twailing like, uh, like anti-magic, it seems. And Lucifero just getting shook up, noticing the star there, and then we see, we see, you know, on the ground, using what strength he has left, and he's like, next time, there's not gonna be one. Isn't that right? And he and he's doing his little he's doing his little he's doing his little finger maneuverment there, transporting us there, Asta, isn't that right, Asta? And Asta hits Lucifero in the back with all the force he can. Another horn going off, cutting through, and he's cutting through like like the shoulder and the neck through Lucifero. He's going down, he's hitting him, big massive explosion, like with the rock just you know, getting crushed to the ground, getting crushed from beneath. You know, Yudo seeing this, Nacht and Yami seeing this, we got Patry and you know, William there seeing this, Vanessa and Gray seeing this, witnessing this, and then we get the most unexpected moment of all, or maybe it is the most expected moment of all, because honestly, I don't know how to take this, but we get clapping. We get clapping, and it's from Adro, uh, uh, Abdro, Abdro, what was it again? Adro, oh man, I, I don't even know how to say it, like... Uh, Adromatic, adromatic. <laughs> let me let me do the Google, let me do Google Translate again. Oh my god! You guys are gonna hate me for this. <laughs> Adramalek. So Adramalek. I'm gonna forget this again. My next review. Adramalek is clapping the crap out of out of Asta and the others. Have finally having beaten Lucifero, and he or she is basically like. Good job, and you, uh, you have to take note of the way the dialogue is written and the dialogue speech bubble. It's like it's like it's like it's like a typical bubble, but at the bottom, it's like it's dropping, like it's falling. So I don't I don't know what to take from that. Is this Adramalek basically, you know, uh, uh, thanking them sincerely or thanking them in a way? Thank you for killing this dude. Now I can take over, maybe I don't know. But he basically, good job, you guys win, and we get this last shot of Lucifer just like, like it looks like he's dead. It looks like he's dead. And Asta and Lieb in his little mini form, chibi form now on Asta's shoulder, a total victory. So Asta and Lieb have finally killed Lucifero, thanks to help from, uh, again, Yami and Nacht and Yuno. So first off, first off, guys, what did I think of this chapter then overall? I liked it. I liked it. I know, I know, I know we kind of went into this. I had, I had a few theories that I was reading online that maybe Lucifer, you know, because if you take, if you guys remember, there was something going on with uh, Yami's body and maybe William's body as well, because they were used to open up the dark, you know, the the, the doors to the, to the underworld, and they were their bodies were affected by the underworld magic, it seems, or the devil magic, and there was something going on with their bodies. And the theory going around was, was what if uh, Lucifero's heart is in Yami's body, and they have to kill Yami, maybe, to, to, to kill Lucifer. It doesn't appear to be the case, or maybe that's something that's still going to be revealed. My theory on the other hand was was maybe they were marked in such a way that uh, Lucifer could resurrect using their bodies, perhaps. But again, that doesn't seem to be the case. Again, this arc is not over. There could be a last-minute twist, and that could still happen. But if Lucifer is dead, dead, I'm not going to cry about it, because for me, he wasn't this big, amazing, powerful villain. This arc, for me, was all about the main heroes going in, and getting retribution uh, after being defeated by the Dark Triad and saving their friends. And they've accomplished that. Lucifero was just this extra wannabe that came in, who was going to cause all of this trouble, and 
you know, that's it. He was just a loud mouth and they beat him. Like I said, the devils aren't that interesting enough of villains. That they're, they're devils. They're, that's all they are, really. You can make the excuse that, that the most interesting one was um, 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 Maggie, um, Maggie Kula, maybe. But that's that's about it, really. The rest were just like your typical, ah, look at me, I'm evil. Ha ah, ah, ha, I'm going to kill you all. Um, and you know what? That's fine. We don't need overcomplicated villains or characters you know the you know the elves were 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 pretty good antagonists because they sort of they had this very tragic backstory and you could feel for them the devils don't have that these guys were pure pure evil who just wanted to come in and cause as much death and chaos as they could and for that they die that's it you, you can't really redeem characters like that but to be fair we don't know the overall hierarchy or overall life that goes on in the underworld besides with what we got with Lee with him being the lowest form devil and getting picked on by the highest ones that's pretty much how it goes it seems but uh I can understand the hate I can understand the hate from a certain point you know you know you you, you hyped this dude up as being the king of the devils and when he came in he did kick everyone's ass but he didn't kill anyone now to be fair Yami and Nut could still die again they got they got holes in their freaking chest and the only thing stopping them from bleeding out is, is Lucifer's arms. You know, once, once those get pulled out, maybe they will die. Maybe they won't. I don't know. I feel like there has to be a sacrifice. I do feel like someone has to die in this arc. Uh, maybe that can still happen. We don't know yet. But uh, as for Lucifer being this uh, big villain that just got wasted, again, the dude still mopped the floor with the captains and he only had 50% of his power. He was not fully revived fully, and therefore he didn't go all out, if that makes sense, okay? And he got his ass easily kicked by people who he underestimated. Now, one of the things I like about this fight role was the fact that it was multiple people, multiple characters teaming up to take on the villain. And I like that when it comes to fights. My, one of my, 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 the Zacred the or, the, or, the, or the Word Demon fight is still one of my favorites in the series because multiple characters had to team up to take on that dude. And this was the same case. This was no different. You know, Asta and Lee might have delivered, developed the killing blow, but they did it with help from, from you know, transporting them, from help from Nott and Yami protecting them, and help from other characters that were there on the sideline watching this whole time. So, you know, everyone, everyone had something to offer in this fight, giving them the all to help defeat this dude and bring him down in the end. So this wasn't just a one character going in and, and doing the kill. No, this was, this was a multiple team effort. And that's one of the things I liked about this fight. And for that, you know, this is a good fight, in my opinion. Like, when it's multiple characters teaming up, working together to defeat the big bad, or a big bad, that usually, for me, is like, that's awesome. That's pretty great. And it was very similar to that in terms of effects to the word demon fight we got. But yeah, I can understand why people would be upset, because he kind of wanted Lucifer to go, to go to be this big thing, go out and defeat people. That's, that's just not going to happen, though. Again, uh, you have to see this from a story perspective. Asta has no real conflict with Lucifer. It was all Lieb. It was through Lieb that he even saw the memories of his mother and that he finally A, acknowledged that Lieb, you know, is his brother and vice versa. And then he finally saw these memories that, you know, he did have a mom that did love him actually and did try and save him. So, you know, etc, etc. And then with the captains, it was a case of the captains finally acknowledging Asta, finally acknowledging this peasant and uh finally acknowledging that you know they had you know that they they changed as people you know it, it wasn't any more it wasn't a case more more of uh you know where royalty were the highest were the best no no this this kid is you know he's, he's a freaking peasant and he's pushed himself to the point where he's gotten here that he can do all of this and they finally acknowledged Asta, and that was the whole point of that captain team of they finally acknowledged him and for that that's a that's a great development and obviously you've got yami and nut who are these two friends who who you know weren't friends anymore but yami still saw who saw not as as his best friend and not finally ignore you know acknowledging those feelings and acknowledging his own failures and regrets and that's what it's all been about this entire final battle was basically characters coming to terms with their regrets their failures and acknowledging their themselves and their other other superiors or other equals and working together to bring this dude down that's what it's about and for that it's a good fight it was a good final fight and I'm hope and I'm curious to see where this goes next, guys. Uh, so yeah, guys. Overall, this was a good bloody chapter, and it's a good end to this fight. Did I want more? No, to be honest, I didn't. Uh, Any more, and and this fight would have dragged out. Uh, the amount that we got was fine. The amount of chapters that we got was fine. It was good. It was done well. Okay. Now I just want to see how this particular arc is going to end, and I want to see what the deal is with uh, Adromalak, Adromac, Adro. <sighs> Yeah. 
Adram Alec. Adram. I'm just gonna call him Adram, okay? I'm, I just wanna see what the deal with Adram is. I wanna see, you know, if they're actually really good or if this is gonna lead to them now sort of like taking over Lucifero's position and making themselves the leader and, and then showcasing that, oh, hold on, this guy actually has his full power 100% and he's now going to wipe the floor with these guys and now he's going to be the big bad going forward maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But personally, I just want to get to the next arc. I want to see what the next arc is going to be. Are we going to get and are we going to go to are we going to go back to the Clover Kingdom and deal with with the repercussions of uh Julius now revealing himself and maybe maybe getting a new wizard king elected? Are we going to deal with the Diamond Kingdom now and go there and see what's going on there? Are we going to go to Yami's country to the rise to the country of the rising sun and maybe having them heal Yami or dealing with whatever's going on with Yami's body there? Are we going to get a backstory with Charmy and figuring out what that, what to do with all of that stuff relating to the dwarves, perhaps? Are we going to get something dealing with the underworld and that? Are we going to get a big revelation that there's angels and gods, perhaps? I don't know. There's there's so many potentials and ways that the next arc and the, and the story can go into because there's a lot of world building that Tabitha can do. And that's one of the things that this series, I feel like, thrives on. And it's world building. There's There's a lot there to see and do. And I can't personally wait to see what happens next. Uh, for now, though, obviously, we're going to get an aftermath after this arc, and that's great to see. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, one of the things I'm most curious right now is to see what Adramam, uh, Adram, uh, Adaram, uh, oh, Christ. Adram, 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 come on, remember it, boy, remember it, Adram, come on. Remember it. Remember Adram. Adram. Don't forget the name. Adram. Adram. I'm going to forget. Oh, I'm going to forget my next week. But yeah, uh, this was a great freaking chapter. I liked it. People really need to chill on the hate. They really do. Like, you know, for me, Black Clover was never this this big, you know, massive story about, oh, the villains and that. You know, forget the villains. Forget them. They're just, they're just scapegoats there for our main heroes to get through. Forget the villains. The villains have never been the most interesting when it comes to Black Clover. Yes, it's a weakness. You can argue it is a big weakness. But uh, for that weakness, we get these big positive strengths in terms of the relationship and the chemistry of these various characters and the world building and the story. For that, I feel like it, it, it's done really bloody well. The villains might not be great, but the story and the characters and what we're getting are. So for the love of Christ, guys, come on, like, like, show some appreciation. Especially to Tabitha, who, who we know is struggling when he's writing this and he has had these upset moments. You know, you can't just well on the guy for Christ's sake. He's clearly got problems, like, and he's trying his best. Like, come on, like, give some, give some respect, man. Like, he's giving us this for Christ's sake. He, it's unearned, it's unjustified in my opinion, but overall I liked this fight and I liked this arc uh, and I'm curious to see where it goes next. That's that's really my overall thoughts on this. Anyway guys, I hope you liked that and as always remember to like and subscribe and I shall see you when I shall see you guys. Take care.